ja genau vom Detroit. Ganz Detroit, schön aus. I've been to Detroit. I know what it's like. We got a temple in Detroit. And we got, it's a very huge temple. Can I tell you the story of how we got that temple? I'll tell you the story someday. <laughs> It's a nice story. Prabhupada, Prabhupada bought that temple himself <laughs> in Detroit. The Fisher Mansion, yeah. Mr. Fisher was the person who provided all the car bodies and General Motors made all the insides. He ma they made the bodies and Mr. Fisher sold us the mansion. But the way Prabhupada got it, it was Prabhupada. <laughs> I'll tell it. It's, it's a quick story, but I'll tell you at the end. <laughs> it's really interesting how, how Prabhupada does things. Yeah, he was like expert businessman. You want to be a businessman? No. no? Okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> you, can be, you can do Krishna's business. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, but make sure it's a big business because if you're a slow, small business, you'll lose money. Uh, so, okay. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Ahari Here we 
So today is the celebration of No, not at all. That's a, the, today's the celebration is called Shiva Ratri. It's a uh, time when the, actually, Nanda Maharaj and some of the cowherd boys went to visit Ambikavan mm -hmm. and to honor Lord Shiva on this day. So we'll speak a little bit about Lord Shiva. Uh, it's not an easy topic because Lord Shiva is in different categories. He is sometimes worshipped as a supreme god. Sometimes he, he is a demigod. And for us, he is the, the best of all Vaishnavas. And he plays all those roles. And in those roles, he has many ways of functioning, which are quite extraordinary and unique to Lord Shiva himself. 
So we'll begin. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale. Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nevasesa Sunyavadi Yade Satarine Panchakopa Tu Vischa Kripa Sindhu Pavacha Ita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadat Har Sivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So this is verse from the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, this is from 12th Canto, chapter 13, verse 16. Uh, it's just a verse, there's no purport, but we can read. Nimna Ganga Yita Ganga Han Devanam Machuta Yata Vaishnavanam Yita Shambhu Parananam Idam Tataha Nimna Gangam Yita Ganga Devanam Machuta Yata Vaishnavanam Yata Shambhu Purananam Idam Tataha So, Nimna Ganga, a river is flowing down to the sea. Yata, as Ganga, the Ganges, Devanam, of all deities, Achuta, the infallible supreme personality of Godhead. Yata, as Vaishnavanam, of devotees of Lord Vishnu. Yata, as Shambhu, Shiva, Purananam, of Puranas. Idam, this, Tata, similarly. Translation, as the Ganga, is the greatest of all rivers. Lord Achyuta, the supreme among deities, and Lord Shambhu Shiva, the greatest of Vaishnavas, so Srimad Bhagavatam is the greatest of all Puranas. Mm -hmm. So here, using this verse as authority, it's saying that of all the Puranas, the, most, the best is Srimad Bhagavatam, and therefore Srimad Bhagavatam says Vaishnavanam Yita Shambhu, that all the Vaishnavas, uh, Lord Shiva, is the greatest, the best. Uh, but Lord Shiva is seen in many ways. It's very difficult to understand his position because he plays many roles. Uh, we have our, on our altar, we have Sri Advaita Acharya, who is a combination, manifestation of Mahavishnu and Sada Shiva, the original Shiva. There is original Shiva from the spiritual world 
And that original Shiva assists Maha Vishnu in the process of creation. It's an interesting way it's explained. Uh, when it's time for the next manifestation to unfold, the Lord creates out of his own personal energies the elements of creation, such as war earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego. And all that is in a, what is called, aggregate state. That means it's more like all together. There's no separation of the elements in an individual way. Now, when the Lord wants the creation to manifest again, he glances in that direction, which is called the Pradhan. The Pradhan is the aggregate. And that glance is not, does not go directly to the Pradhan, but it's carried by Ramadevi. Ramadevi is the consort of Mahavishnu, who, who was an expansion of Lakshmi Devi, Mahalakshmi. So she takes that glance and carries it to the Pradhan, and then in that glance there are three elements. Uh, all the living entities, they're there, all the jiva souls. Uh, there is the time factor, which makes up the elements that measure the material energy. And there is Shiva, <laughs> and Sada Shiva. And so the color, or the, the glance itself, has a very bright glow. And that glow is like a halo. I don't know if you know what a halo is. Yeah. Halo is like a bright light coming out of the body. And uh, that bright light is Shiva. <laughs> So that's why it is sometimes said that Lord Shiva is the father of all living entities because he assists in the creation by carrying the living entities and the time factor with the assistance of Ramadevi to the creative elements and then the jivas connect with the creative elements and then Lord Brahma appears and then by his direction that he receives from Lord Vishnu, he puts it all together and forms the 8,400,000 species of life and puts the jivas in those different bodies according to their karma from their last uh, manifestation. So it's all mentioned, both in, mostly in Brahma Samhita, this is mentioned, but it's also mentioned in the second and also part of the third canto of Bhagavatam. So it's interesting, Lord Shiva plays that role, so that's called Sada Shiva. But the Shiva that we know, or the pastimes that we hear, the Shiva that manifests himself as the principal functionary Shiva in this universe, because there is a Shiva for every universe. As Brahma is a post, so is Lord Shiva a post. So, um, and there is different conceptions how people worship Shiva. Many, many per persons worship Shiva as the Supreme Lord because there are Puranas that glorify Lord Shiva as the Supreme. But that's meant for certain people who are on the lower modes, such as the modes of passion and ignorance, so they can worship a pure devotee of the Lord, a great devotee of the Lord, an empowered person, and then raise themselves up to a higher level of worship. And there's those who worship him as a demigod for material benefits. Such persons were Ravana, he wished to worship Shiva. Banasura worshiped Shiva. They were two that really worshiped Shiva, but then there was others, demons, who also worshiped Shiva for material benediction, such as Vikrasura. Vikrasura is mentioned in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in an interesting way, because there's always arguments amongst the Vaishnavas and the Shivites who's superior. Is it Vishnu or is it Shiva? There's a beautiful story in the 
pastimes of Ramanujacharya, mm. where um, one deity was being worshipped in the temple. And the Shivites were saying that it was Shiva, and others were saying it was Vishnu. So there was a big fight, discussion, you know how intellectuals fight. <laughs> We do that in ISKCON. It's called an ISKCON resolve, but it's usually ISKCON unresolve. <laughs> well, that's another story. Uh, and so Ramanujacharya made a, he said, we will put the symbols of Lord Shiva and the symbols of Lord Vishnu at the feet of the deity, and tomorrow we will come and see which symbols the deity is wearing. And they locked the door so nobody could get in, and they put the symbols there. So the next day, when they opened the door, the deity was holding the symbols of Vishnu. <laughs> like that. And that, and, and in this story with Vikrasura, Vikrasura was one of the most low-class demons. I mean, there's some good demons who have some brains, but this guy was really stupid. <laughs> I mean, he was the lowest. So he wanted the he want he wanted power. So he worshipped Lord Shiva, and you can do that worship Lord Shiva for power. So what he was doing, he was chanting mantras to Shiva, and he was cutting off his flesh and throwing it into the fire at the same time worshiping Lord Shiva with mantras. And so he was determined. And pretty soon, you know, he would have been throwing his whole body into the fire. So Shiva saw that this guy is a rascal, but still, uh, he came to him and said, all right, what do you want? <laughs> so he appeared. And Vikrasar said, ah, oh, well, and he honored Lord Shiva and he said, actually, I want the benediction that anybody's head I touch will crack. And tatastu, that means he gave it to him. <laughs> he awarded him the benediction. So as soon as he did that, the demon had been looking at Parvati, the wife of Lord Shiva, so he was getting a little lusty for Parvati. So um, he was thinking, I gotta get rid of Shiva so I can get Parvati. So then, now having that benediction, he came at he came at Shiva to touch Shiva's head, and Shiva realized, "I better get out of here." <laughs> so he ran, he fled, and the demon followed him. So it was a chase. So at one point, Lord Vishnu appeared in one place, and Shiva was running, and he came past that place where Lord Vishnu was, and Shiva kept running, and then. Lord Vishnu used his yoga maya powers, or maha maya powers. And he stopped the demon. He said, what are you doing? Well, I got this benediction. Anybody's head I touch will crack, and I'm going to use it on Shiva. Where did you get the benediction? From Lord Shiva. Really? Lord Shiva is not well these days, and he gives out benedictions that just doesn't work. So it doesn't work. And I can prove it to you. So he used his yoga maya poems. He says, just touch your own head and you'll see it doesn't work. So he did and boom, his head cracked to pieces. <laughs> and then Lord Shiva was saved by Lord Vishnu. So in that story, which is in the 10th canto, again, it shows the superior position of Lord Vishnu over Lord Shiva. It says that when Lord Vishnu wants to uh, destroy, he becomes Lord Shiva. When he wants to create, he becomes Lord Brahma. And as Vis Lord Vishnu, he maintains. The so the Lord transforms himself into these different devas for the sake of creation and destruction, like that. But he's above all these demigods at the same time. There's a beautiful verse, because people argue, and you'll find this a lot, not here, but people in India, and they'll always say that Shiva's superior, 
when Vishnu is superior, they go back and forth. But there's a verse that it says in the Brahma Samhita, I think I have the verse here, and I'll read it because it's, be it's a beautiful verse. Shiram yatadahi pikara vishesha yoga sanjayate natataha prati pratag asti heto yam sambutam apitata samupaiti karyad govindam hari purusham tamaham bhajami. Translation Just as milk is transformed into curd by the action of acids, but yet the effect of, of curd is neither same as nor different from its cause, milk. So I adore the primeval Lord Govinda, of whom the state of Shambhu is a transformation for the performance of the work of destruction. This is just what we were saying. So milk and yogurt, yogurt is just nothing but milk. That's all it is. But it can't be used as milk because it has a different consistency. So that is the difference between Shiva and Vishnu. They are the same, but there is a slight difference, and that is in the functions. In the, in, that is in the functions. And of course, Lord, uh, Lord Shiva plays the role of a demigod many times. Lord Shiva worships. He worships Ram, and he worships uh, Krishna, too. In the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the 24th chapter of that canto, there's a whole series. It's, it's one of the longest chapters in the Bhagavatam. There's about 78 verses, and it's all Shiva's prayers to Lord uh, Vishnu, like that. Krishna, Vishnu. It's a beautiful chapter, and it's so much beautiful Sanskrit that has been used to glorify Lord Vishnu in that, that Bhagavatam section. Um, Lord Shiva one, one time wanted to take part in the Rasa dance because he heard that, you know, this is the Krishna dances with his gopis, and he wanted to actually enter into the Rasa dance. But, so he decided, so he went to Vrindavan around that time, because Krishna dances twice a year, usually. In the, in the spring and then in the fall, like that. And he performs the dance slightly different in each time. <laughs> so he was there, and he was thinking to come to the Rasa dance, but he was met by Radharani's girlfriend, Lalita. So Lalita said, what are you doing? Oh, I want to come to the Rasa dance. No men allowed. <laughs> Only for the ladies. <laughs> and you're in the wrong body, so you can't come. But then he was begging. She said, all right, if you want to come, you have to become a gopi. He said, I will, I'll become a gopi. What do I do? She said, all right. She took him down to one kund, a special kund. She said, you bathe in this kund, and then when you come out, you will be a gopi. So he did. He went in, and he came out, and there he was. He was a little smaller in size, <laughs> and he had a little, uh, he had still had his little crescent moon on his forehead. <laughs> And then he came to the Rasa dance, and Krishna was there, and Krishna s saw, and Krishna saw, he started laughing. Who's this gopi? You know, he looks quite funny. <laughs> I never saw this one <laughs> before. And then he realized, because he saw the moon, and he said, oh, it's Shiva. All right, Shiva, since you tried so hard, but we can't let you dance with the Rasa dance. It's not for you. But sometimes people try to disturb my pastimes, so you should guard it. So he became what is called Dick Pala. Dick Pala means one who, who gives uh, protection in different directions. Pala means protection. Dick means directions like that. So he was given the, the position to guard the Rasa dance, and that was the best he could get, which was pretty good. <laughs> 
There's another story when Sanatana Goswami was doing his bhajan on the outskirts of Manasi Ganga. And he was writing and he was praying. But there was a problem. One in the evening time the mosquitoes would come and they would bother Sanatana Goswami. And so you know what mosquitoes are like, right? Those of you who've been to India, you you have good 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 experiences with mosquitoes. <laughs> and so uh yeah. So Sanatana Goswami was thinking, it's very difficult for me to concentrate on my writing with these mosquitoes. So uh, I think I'm going to leave this place. So I'll leave tomorrow. And so Lord Shiva's temple is right there. It's called Chakaleshwar Mahadev. You can still see it. There's eight lingas there. So Lord Shiva, knowing that Sanatana Goswami was planning to leave, he decided to do something. So he disguised himself as a brahmana, and he came, and he started to speak to Sanatana. And then he said at one point, you know, I know the mosquitoes are bothering you, and, and you want to leave, but I assure you, just stay another night, and you'll see there will be no more mosquitoes. So Sanatan was uh, convinced, and so he stayed. And after that, there was no more mosquitoes. Because Shiva, he went to the demigod who was in charge, with mos charge of mosquitoes, and he said, keep your mosquitoes away from Sanatan. <laughs> so there's a demigod in charge of everything. And to this day, you can go to that same spot where Sanatan Goswami meditates, in that place there is no mosquitoes, <laughs> even today. <laughs> so it's interesting how Lord Shiva wanted to keep the association of Sanatana Goswami, so he performed that pastime. <laughs> Lord Shiva is dira. He, he's, not, he, he's not disturbed. He's not disturbed. He's equipoised in all cases. When Daksha came into the Yajna arena, which was a, uh, an arena that was about to perform a great sacrifice, all the demigods were there. Uh, the chief demigods were there, including Lord Brahma. Lord Shiva was also there. Daksha is the progenitor, and his service is to produce living entities. He is very sexually inclined, and he can produce thousands of children. <laughs> No problem. And, and that's his service. But he is also has many, many outstanding qualities. So at one point, Daksha entered into the arena, and all the devas, when they saw Daksha, they got up to welcome him. They all immediately, just like automatic, they got up to welcome Daksha. Because he was very handsome, very intelligent, and very had many, many outstanding qualities. But there's one problem he had. He was proud. Although he was so qualified, he was also a little proud of his qualifications. And so, when he walked in, everyone stood up, but Lord Shiva didn't. Lord Shiva was in meditation, and so, he just, you know, continued his meditation. And Daksha was offended because everybody stood up and welcomed him, but Shiva didn't. And so he turned his attention to Shiva and started criticizing Shiva for the way he looks, because, you know, he dresses with snakes, and he has ashes all over his body, coming from crematoriums. You know, he's, he's not a fellow you see on the street every day, you know. Maybe some people try to imitate him, but. And so he found fault. And then, then he also had a little problem with Shiva before that, because his father is Brahma. Daksha's father is Lord Brahma. So Brahma told Daksha that you give your 13th daughter, he had 16 daughters, 
your 13th daughter to Lord Shiva for marriage, and that was Sati. Hmm. So he didn't like the idea, but because he couldn't disobey Lord Brahma, who was his father and powerful demigod, he did it. But he always felt that he want, didn't want to do it, but he obeyed. Now he was, here was a chance to find fault with Lord Shiva, and he started criticizing Lord Shiva. When that has happened, the whole assembly became uh, disrupted. And some people walked out of the assembly, some of the devas. Others started to speak in favor of Daksha, and others started to speak in favor of Lord Shiva. So it became. And finally, the whole assembly was destroyed, and the yagya didn't go on. Shiva, he, he wasn't. He, he, uh, he knew Daksha was just an arrogant fool, so he didn't really take it so seriously. But then there was another yagya that was coming up mm, to begin again. They were going to try and begin again, and Daksha was also going to come. Now, Daksha's daughter, Sati, was married to Shiva, and Sh Shiva had instructed her, don't go to the yagya, because if you do, you'll see that I'll be criticized by your father, and that will be worse than death for you. But Sati was attached. <coughs> she was attached to the idea of going and socializing with her friends and being there with her family. You know, the whole idea of having a good time, social. And so Shiva warned her, don't go. You'll be sorry if you go. You know, I'll be criticized, and that and that'll be worse than death for you. But she le she didn't listen, and she went anyway. And as soon as she got there, Daksha started to criticize her by criticizing Lord Shiva. Sati w became so angry because she's the personification of the material energy. She has the power to burn the whole material energy. <laughs> she's you know. Her expansion is Durga Devi. <laughs> and so when that happened, Sachi just decided to give up her. She said, this body has been given to me by you, and therefore I want nothing to do with you. So, I want, so she decided to get rid of her body. So she sat down in mystic meditation and meditated on the fiery element in her body and she burned her whole body to ashes right in front of everybody. And Daksha didn't really do anything. Everybody was shocked. When Shiva heard that, he sent one powerful demon, one demon, well, actually a series of demons called the Ribus. And they came in and they just wrecked havoc with the whole assembly. It was a big fight. And, you know, one. Pusha, one demigod called Pusha, he got his teeth knocked out. <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, what was that one? Brigu, he, he also he took he also got into a fight with Brigu. So it was a big fight. And at one point uh, they cut off the head of Daksha and then they replaced his head with the head of a goat. <laughs> And then, of course, after doing that, he became a little humble. <laughs> yeah, now he was the same Daksha with a head of a goat. <laughs> of course, that's, you can read the whole pastime. It's in the fourth canto, the first seven chapters of the fourth canto describe this whole pastime. But then he surrendered to Shiva and offered prayers to Shiva, and he apologized for everything. Shiva forgave him. But then again, after some time, you read in the sixth canto how he criticized Narada Muni, too. So <laughs> he's, he's back at it again. <laughs> so you have to be careful when you criticize great souls. You could lose, you can have your head as a goat, maybe. <laughs> it's not so nice. <laughs> and so that's one of the wonderful pastimes of Lord Shiva. But then he was without his consort. Mm -hmm. Sati had gone, but then she reappeared as the daughter of the Himalayas, and her name was Parvati. So then 
he was un again united with his eternal consort. So she, first she was Parvati, and then she became. Uh, 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 first she was Sati, then she became Parvati. Uh, there are many beautiful stories. One time Lord Shiva was sitting with his wife in the forest. And, you know, he was in loving affairs with his wife, and his wife was somewhat indisposed, to use a word. And Suyagya was a soldier, and he came with his small army, just some soldiers on horses, and they entered into the forest. <clears throat> and and uh, Parvati, she, was, she became upset because these men had come into the forest. So she complained to Lord Shiva, and Lord Shiva made a a vow that anyone, any male that comes into this forest will become a female. So when Suyagya and his armies came into the forest, they were riding on the horses, and then all of a sudden they looked, and they had women's bodies. <laughs> Their bodies immediately changed into ladies. Some people might think that's pretty good. <laughs> Others might think otherwise. But anyway, you can think whatever way you like. That's up to you. But that's, that's one of the pastimes. Lord Shiva's abode is called Kailash. There is a, another verse. Goloka nam nijatam itale tatasya Devi mahesha haridam esute shuteshu Te te brabhava nijaya vihitas chayena Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Lowest of all is located Devidam. Next above is Maheshdam. Above Maheshdam is the place called Haridam. Above Haridam and above them all is located Krishna's own realm, Goloka. I adore the primeval Lord, Lord Govinda, who has allotted their respective authorities to the rulers of the different graded realms. So we say there are three realms of existence. There's the material realm, spiritual realm, and then Shiva's realm. So that's Maheshdam, Shiva, Haridam, spiritual world. Devidam is this world. Devidam means uh, Dorgadam. So Shiva's abode is between the material and the spiritual worlds. So the, the universes are covered by different layers of material energy. And as you go outside of the universes, the layers become thicker and thicker and thicker. Each layer is 10 times thicker. till you fa pass through all the, the layers, and all these are different elements of the material energy, wor earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. When you get past all these layers, then you're outside of the universe and you come to an area of complete darkness. There's nothing there. And if you were to travel higher and higher up, it doesn't, it doesn't really tell you. It, it does tell you how, how far, but I can't remember the actual. So many billions and billions of miles. You travel up farther, then you come to an area that is all light, beautiful light. And that light is Maheshdam. That's where Lord Shiva exists. He gets that light from the spiritual world, which is coming from the Brahma Jyoti, and that lights up Maheshdam. And that's a very opulent place where my Lord Shiva is. So those who actually worship Lord Shiva with devotion may attain his abode in Maheshdam like that. But Lord but Prabhupada explains to us. We worship Lord Shiva as a devotee of Lord Krishna. And by worshiping Lord Shiva, he brings us to Krishna. So those devotees who worship Lord Shiva should be encouraged to worship him as, you know, as a devotee of Lord Krishna. And that way, they'll be make advancement. Because it says, when you worship the devotee of the Lord, it is worship, it's actually higher than worshiping the Lord himself. <laughs> 
it's actually higher. And Shiva makes that point in one verse, tadiyanam samarchanam, uh, param devi, what is that? Niyataram devi, uh, aradhanam sarvesham vishnu, yeah, aradhanam sarvesham vishnu aradhanam param tadiyanam samarchanam. That the highest worship, this book this is spoken by Lord Shiva, the highest worship is to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead with Vishnu. But higher than that is Tadiya. Tadiya means in relationship to. So those things that are in relationship to, Krish, to the Lord is a higher form of worship. And then in that verse, purport it's mentioned like Tulsi Devi, Srimad Bhagavatam, this pure devotee spiritual master, like that. These are indications of Tadiya or those in relation. So although we worship the Supreme Lord, still higher than that is to worship those pure elements that are in connection like that, especially Tulsi Devi. Um, many, many beautiful stories about Lord Shiva. Uh, Lord Shiva was the guru of Ravana Ravana, he defeated Ravana when Ravana tried to uproot Shiva's abode. He came to the place of Kailash and using his ten heads, hands, he tried to pick up, you know, Kailash mountain and throw it. Shiva knew what was going on, so he pushed his foot down on the ground and the whole earth went down and the ten head, hands of uh, Ravana got stuck underneath and he couldn't move. <laughs> so Ravana stuck and then he started to offer beautiful prayers to Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva was pleased and he came and he relieved him of his suffering and he said, because you pleased me so nicely with these prayers, uh, ask for anything you want and the Lord gave him he asked for a particular weapon. I can't remember. I don't, I don't think it was the Pashupati. That's the Lord Shiva's prize weapon, Pashupati. Um, but was one of a particular weapon that he gave Ravana. So Ravana always worshipped Lord Shiva. <coughs> Demons do that. I mean, you see Banasura worship Lord Shiva. Uh, Ra uh, Harani Kashipu worship Lord Brahma. So these devas are worshipped about demons themselves, you know, a lot of them are demons. Because they give benedictions, material benedictions, they're obliged. So when there was a fight between Lord Ram and, and Ravana, and Ravana was being defeated, Parvati said to Shiva, Shiva, your devotee is in trouble, go save him. And Shiva said, normally I would, but not in this case. <laughs> Brahma Bole Chatur Mukhe Krishna Krishna Hare Hare Mahadeva Pancha Mukhe Rama Rama Hare Hare So Brahma, he worships Krishna and Shiva worships Ram. He's a Ram Bhakta, but he also worships Krishna. Vishnu and Krishna also, but he's mostly a Ram Bhakta. <laughs> so when Ravana was killed by Ram, Ram was thinking, "Well, I killed the dis I killed the uh, the uh, disciple of Lord Shiva. Therefore, I should worship Lord Shiva to make some amends." And of course, Ravana was also a Brahmana. So the Lord was thinking, I should worship Lord Shiva. So he told Hanuman, Hanuman, you go to Kailash Mountain and you get the Shiva Linga and bring it back and we'll perform a ceremony to honor Lord Shiva. So Hanuman left, but he was gone for a long time and didn't come back. And then the Brahmanas who were doing the puja, they said, my dear Lord, the time for the puja is now. If we wait any longer, it'll be inauspicious. 
So what to do? Hanuman didn't come back. So Sita said, well, I will make a Shiva Linga. So she took her own hands and with sand, she formed a beautiful single Shiva Linga. Then Ram and all the Brahmanas, they did that puja to that Shiva Linga. And just at the time the whole puja was over, Hanuman came back with two Shiva Lingas. And when Hanuman saw what had happened, he was so unhappy. Because that means he failed on his mission. He went to get the Shiva Linga, but he, because he was late and he saw the worship was over, he was so unhappy. But Ram said to Hanuman, Hanuman, we will establish a temple here and we will put your Shiva Lingas in the temple and worship them along with uh, Sita's. So there's a beautiful temple in Rameshwar. You go there, I was there. And there's two Shiva Lingas of Hanuman and one of Sita, the one she made. It's made out of sand. But that one is on the altar and you can't get too close to it. You can see it, it's, it's white in color. And then the other two Shiva Lingas are, uh, there's one by the door when you come in and there's another one where you can circumambulate. These are the two. So everyone is mostly worshiping the two Shiva Lingas that Hanuman brought back. And Han Lord Ram did that just to please Hanuman because he worked so hard, but he was unhappy he didn't come back in time. So people misunderstand that pastime and say, well, this is proof that Shiva is superior than Ram because Shiva Ram performed his worship of Shiva. But actually it wasn't. They don't know the, the reason behind it. He did that just to please Sh uh, Lord Shiva because he had killed his disciple, Ravana. But ulti ultimately, you un we understand that Sh Shiva is the disciple of Ram and not the other way around. <laughs> And still to this day, people will take that pastime and turn it around and say, this is a proof that, you know, Shiva is superior than Ram. But even Krishna worshipped his devotee. That doesn't mean his devotee was, were, you know, he worshipped King Yudhisthira. And that doesn't mean King Yudhisthira was greater than Krishna. So sometimes the, devo the, the Lord worships his devotee. And sometimes people misunderstand like that. So these are some of the wonder, few of the wonderful pastimes of Lord Shiva. I'll tell one last pastime. I can't forget it, this one because we have Panchatattva here. So one day Shiva was, was chanting, Gauranga, 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 Gauranga! And he was dancing and dancing and dancing. And he was in ecstasy, just chanting, Go Ranga! Go Ranga! Go Ranga! And Parvati came along. My Lord, I never saw you like this. Who is this Go Ranga? You're dancing. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Oh, finally he said, Oh, that's all he said. No, he said more than that. <laughs> he said, soon he will appear in a place called Navadweep. And then he explained, he will be golden in color and he will, ex he will enunciate the chanting of the holy names of Lord Krishna and spread it all over the world. And so Parvati got interested. I'm going to find out more. So she went to Navadweep and she started to pray and perform austerities for a long time. Finally, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to her. And as soon as she saw that beautiful golden form, she recognized him, her, him as that person she was praying to. And she bowed down and offered her obeisances. And then she took some dust from his feet and she put it on the part because the ladies, they have the part in here. You got the part there? Okay. Where's your part? Is it in the middle or on the side? 
make sure it's in the middle. It should be in the middle, because if you part your hair in the middle, that means you are married. If you part your hair in your side, it means you're a prostitute. So be careful. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's why they that's how they tell ladies in in India. The hair in the middle is a married woman on the side is a prostitute. Yeah, so there's so many signs that indicate a person's you know occupation. So she took her the dust and put it. And now that part is called simanta. It's called the simanta. So that area became simanta dweep. So we know that area today is Sri Mantadri. And in, in that area, there's a beautiful Shiva Linga. Not beautiful, it's big, big Shiva Linga. So every year, probably on this day, the devotees from Mayapur go and we do a grand ceremony to honor Lord Shiva in that place. It's right next to the Jagannath Temple in Rajpur. And... Uh, uh, we speak about Lord Shiva, and then we have Kirt Krishna Kirtan, and then at the end is a beautiful, beautiful Abhi Sheikh with garlands and tosi leaves and so many nice substances, and Abhi Sheikh goes on for a long time. Every year when I'm there, I usually take part in the Abhi Sheikh, and I usually get all my clothes turned into something else. I get fully wet with Abhi Sheikh. Looks like I got the ab looks like I got the bath, but it, it's because it's such a big linga that the devotees when they pour it it splashes all over, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> but it's an ecstasy and the devotees are watching and we take the garlands and throw it out to the devotees and so but that's that's a very special place. You could go and still see that Shiva Linga there. It's right near the Rajpur temple. So there's the connection between um, Lord Shiva and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. Hmm. One time Lord Chaitanya went into the ecstasy of Lord Shiva and he started to dance like Lord Shiva. And that's another pastime. Huh? What is it called? Bhuvaneshwar? Yeah. I'm not sure where it took place, but Bhuvaneshwar is named after Lord Shiva. Yeah. And that's that out of all the places in India that I know of, Bhuvaneshwar is just full of Shiva temples, Shiva pastimes. Everything about that place is Lord Shiva, Bhuvaneshwar. Okay, so these are a few of the unlimited pastimes of Lord Shiva. So would anyone would like to make any comments or questions? Sure. I heard a few times that uh, Sada Shiva is Vishnu Tattva. Is that the case or not? Well, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, it is the case. But for the sake of function, he performs a certain activity, and he's known as Sadashiva. Yeah. Sadashiva means the original Shiva. He has, a, as described by the Acharyas, there is a, a, a Vaikuntha planet in the spiritual world where that Sadashiva resides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. What about Hanuman? I also heard that he's also yeah. He's shares. one of the uh, he's one of the Arudras. In the Mohini Murti incarnation, when Shiva was chasing after Mohini Murti, and then he lost his potency. That potency was taken and given to Anjana, and that was the birth of Hanuman. So Hanuman is actually a son of Shiva, and he's in, and he's cast cla categorized as one of the. 11 Rudras. There's 11 Rudras. So Hanuman takes birth in different ways. Sometimes he's Keshiva, Keshari Putra. Keshari was his father and Anjana was his mother. But his, he has the same mother, Anjana, in each manifestation. But in one of those manifestations, he is the son of Lord Shiva. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And in Kurukshetra, there is a, a five-headed Lord Shiva mm -hmm. uh, deity, and one of the heads is Hanuman. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And Yoga. Yeah. yeah. So Hanuman is very much connected to Lord Shiva. Yeah. But he's, he's classified as a Rudra in that case. We often also read that uh, Shiva worships um, Ananta. Ananta? Yeah, that's two. We all worship Ananta. That's why we're here today. <laughs> Without Ananta, there's nothing. <laughs> the beginning and the end. Sankarshan. Oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for making the distinction. <laughs> so what's the code? Yeah, How yeah, yeah. That's mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the fifth canto. There's a whole section on the the glories of Ananta and Sankarshan. Yeah. So yeah, this, there is the Ram manifestation. I think the connection. I'm not sure of the connection, but yeah. He does. He also worships Ananta or Sankarshana. Ananta is an expansion of Sankarshana, which is an expansion of Lord Balaram. Because also in Chaitanya Lila Advaita, you see Sada Shiva and Nityananda, that is Sankarshana. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, there are five manifestations of Lord Nityananda. One of them, one of them is Ananta. Yeah. Or Sankarshan. Sometimes they use the same term. Ananta has he's the multi-headed serpent at the bottom of the universe. That he is people. Here's what the scientist calls as gravity. <laughs> people they call you know what holds up the universe. Well, it's actually it's uh, Ananta, and he's a a white snake. Mm -hmm. He's whitish in color. Yeah, so everything you say is correct. <laughs> There's nothing I can say to add to that, yeah. But as Shiva plays many roles, you know, he's definitely. And if someone worships Shiva as the Supreme Lord, we don't tell them not to. Continue to worship Shiva as the Supreme Lord, and if they do, they will gradually start coming to the sh to worship Krishna because Shiva will bring him, and this happens. There are many devotees in our movement, and there are many other persons who worship Shiva and came to Krishna through Shiva. Many, because if you worship Shiva nicely, he takes you to Vishnu to Krishna. Like that, and that pleases him more if you worship. Like that. There's a deity in Navadweep in one of the islands. It's called Harihara. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen it. It's half white and half dark. And it's indication of that of Shiva and Vishnu in one form, like that. Harihara. And there's some pastime connected with that, but I'm not sure of the details. Do we have any Shiva Bhaktas here? Anybody want to be a Shiva Bhakta? <laughs> no. No, okay. See, there you go. That's, that's, that's the spirit, because if you worship... The pure devotee, or who, who, who is the best of all Vaishnavas, Prabhupada said that's higher than worshiping the Lord. <laughs> but because it pleases Shiva, if we worship Krishna, we worship Krishna. <laughs> but we honor, we don't we don't worship Shiva, but we honor Shiva. That's the point. We honor Shiva. 
And we prayed to Shiva, please give me Krishna. Bhakta, please make me a devotee of the Lord. You have a question there? Hare Krishna Maharaj, yes. Um, there is also a lecture on Facebook. And Avaduta Raya Prabhu is um, asking also, um, um, I will read, Shiva mostly worship Ram, but there is an interesting prayer by Shiva, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Kripa Kataksha nice. Stotra. What is the story that he started to worship Radharani? Ooh. <laughs> nice question. <laughs> and there is an answer. <laughs> Um, I'm not too sure of the connection, but that, yeah, that prayer is there. Um, I think there was a past time where Radha and Krishna came to the abode of Kailash. And when they came, then Shiva offered beautiful prayers, and that's the connection. Yeah, there's one particular pastime where he honored Radha and Krishna. Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj tells another particular pastime, which I don't really know the details, where Krishna is telling Radharani that Shiva is the best of all devotees. And Radharani is questioning. And then Krishna is answering her question, then she comes up with another question. Well, he hangs around crematoriums, yes, but... He carries snakes, yes, but his followers are all ghosts and spirits, yes. I mean, so, but then Krishna defeats all her arguments and establishes Shiva as the best of all worship. I wish I remember the details. That's a beautiful, beautiful pastime. So the connection between Shiva and Radha and Krishna are there. So those prayers are actually very, very deep felt prayers. But I don't know the pastime that brought about those pairs. All I know that he did honor Radha and Krishna. That's, I'm sorry for the person who asked the question. Uh, I can't give you a, a complete answer, but please continue to ask your questions until you find your answer. Because <laughs> there is an answer. Okay, thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Shiva Ratri ki jai, Gaur Pimanande. Gaur.